you folks for joining us. This is the last time you're ever going to see us until September. September. Till September. So we're finishing up 2 Kings here, the last chapter, 2 Kings chapter 25. We're going to take a little break, probably after Labor Day or something like that, we will resume. Uh, again, if you want to put your, the comment section, if you have a particular book of the Bible that you'd like us to go through, we covered the entire New Testament previously during the pandemic and stuff like that. So uh, if there's an Old Testament book you'd like us to dig into that we haven't d dug into yet, place that in the comments and we can kick it off in September. Okay. All right. So 2 Kings chapter 25. Second Kings chapter 25. And in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came with all his army against Jerusalem and laid siege to it. And they built siege works all around it. So the city was besieged till the eleventh year of King Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, famine was so severe in the city that there was no food for the people of the land. Then a breach was made in the city, and all the men of war fled by night by way of the gate between the two walls. By the king's guardian and the Chaldeans were around the city, and they went in the direction of Arabah. But the army of the Chaldeans pursued the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army was scattered from him. Then they captured the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon at Riblah, and they passed sentence on him. They slaughtered the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him in chains and took him to Babylon. In the fifth month, on the seventh day of the month, that was the 19th year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, the captain of the bodyguard, a servant of the king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, and he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every great house he burned down, and all the army of the Chaldeans, who were with the captain of the guard, broke down the walls around Jerusalem, and the rest of the people who were left in the city and the desert deserters who had, been, who had deserted to the king of Babylon, together with the rest of the multitude, Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, carried into exile. But the captain of the guard left some of the poorest of the land to be vine dressers and plowmen. And the pillars of bronze that were in the house of the Lord, and the stands, and the bronze sea that were in the house of the Lord, the Chaldeans broke into pieces and carried the bronze to Babylon. And they took away the pots and the shovels and the snuffers and the dishes for incense and all the vessels of bronze used in the temple service. The fire pans also and the bowls. What was of gold the captain and the guard took away as gold, and what was of silver as silver. As for the two pillars, one sea, the stands that Solomon had made for the house of the Lord, the bronze of all of these vessels was beyond weight. The height of one pillar was 18 cubits, and on it was a capital of bronze. The height of the capital was three cubits, a lattice work and pomegranates, all of bronze, were all around the capital. And the second pillar had the same with the lattice work. And the captain of the guard took Sarai, the chief priest, and Zephaniah the second priest, and the three keepers of the threshold. And from the city he took an officer who had been in command of the men of war, and five men of the king's council who were found in the city, and the secretary of the commander of the army who mustered the people of the land, and sixty men of the people of the land who were found in the city. And Nebuzaradan the captain of the guard took them and brought them to the king of Babylon at Riblah. And the king of Babylon struck them down and put them to death at Riblah at the hand of Hamath. So Judah was taken into exile out of its land. And over the people who remained in the land of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had left, he appointed Gedaliah, the son of Ahiakim, son of Shaphan, as governor. Now all the captains and their men heard the king of Babylon had appointed Gedaliah as governor. They came with their men to Gedaliah at Mizpah, namely Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah and Jonahan, the son of Kariah, and Sariah, the son of Tahamoth, the Netophatite, and Jaazaniah, the son of Maakite. And Gedaliah swore to them and their men, saying, Do not be afraid because of the Chaldean officials. Live in the land and serve the king of Babylon, and it shall be well with you. But in the seventh month, Ishmael, the son of Nethaniah, the son of Elishama, 
of the royal family came with ten men and struck down Gedaliah and put to him to death along with the Jews and the Chaldeans who were with him at Mizpah. Then all the people, both small and great, and the captains of the forces arose and went to Egypt, for they were afraid of the Chaldeans. And in the 37th year of exile, Jehoiakim, king of Judah, in the 12th month, on the 27th day of the month, evil Merodach, king of Babylon, and the year he began to reign, graciously free Jehoiachin, king of Judah, from prison. And he spoke kindly to him and gave him a seat above the seats of the kings who were with him in Babylon. So Jehoiachin put off his prison garments, and every day of his life he dined regularly at the king's table. And for his allowance, a regular allowance was given to him by the king, according to his daily needs, as long as he lived. Okay. Uh, wow, it's kind of sad, this whole yes. thing. So let's pray. Father, teach us now from your word. Teach us, Lord God, what it means to be, uh, to trust in you, to follow you, when things look uh, very, very grim. Help us, Lord God, to lean on you and not on our own understanding in all things. Acknowledge you as our King and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, I don't think many of us, uh, like in our modern thinking, can really understand how horrifying siege warfare was. Oh, no. You're essentially surrounding the place to starve people to death. Eventually, you're going to run out of provisions. Horrifying things start happening. Uh, when Samaria was laid to siege, that was the one incident where the one mother was cooked up as her son, and the other yep. one was supposed to cook up her son the next day. I mean, it's just it, yes. it's, it's beyond horrifying yeah. uh, siege warfare. So, I mean, I just, you know, you're talking about from, what have we got, the, from the ninth year, to the eleventh, uh, to the eleventh year. So a year and a half of, I think it's at least a year and a half. Yeah. Of, of basically being imprisoned in this city, and starving to death. Yes. I I don't <laughs> just. Yeah, and I mean Jerusalem was set up at that point to be fairly defensible because they had a fresh water supply. There were. Yeah. There was water flowing into the city from springs. So that's one advantage. But yeah, it's basically the two armies staring at each other across the wall, waiting for the other to starve. Because yeah. there was some starvation on the outside as well, but you had supply lines. But um, In there? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we haven't... This doesn't happen much in modern-day warfare. Um I think the closest there was, was like uh, Leningrad. Leningrad. Yeah. yeah. When I was in elementary school, I read a book about that. Yeah. Where it was just like all of these people starving and it was kind of grim. It's like, okay, we're going to eat grass, except it's winter and there is no grass. I think kind of what saved them is they did have a supply route over the frozen. Um, frozen. What, what yeah. It was the city of Austin. I, I don't know. Remember. I, I can't remember. But yeah. uh, whatever the frozen lake or whatever it is, they could actually kind of truck some supplies in that. That kind of saved them. The harshness of the weather. Kind of <laughs> the harshness of the weather. <laughs> kind of saved them to an extent. But, yeah, that was... Uh, they didn't that, have that option in Jerusalem back then. No. no, no. So this is horrifying. And then um, <laughs> they, they eventually flee through a breach in the wall. And they're on the run. But the, the Babylonians overtake Zedekiah. And then horrifying, the last... I mean, this is the cruelty, right? So, yeah. So we're gonna put all your sons and and uh, your your you know your offspring to death before your eyes. That'll be the last thing you see. Then we're gonna gouge out your eyes. Yeah, that's that's I. That's the last picture you were gonna have. Yeah. In there. So anyway, that's this is this is brutal, brutal and horrifying stuff. It's amazing how brutal people can be towards each other, how they can think of things in ways to really torture or, or yeah. demoralize people and just, it's just horrifying. Um, surely our hearts are, are wicked beyond recognition. Um, all right, so uh, then 
they they weren't done even after they they defeated them. It's like we're gonna humiliate them. Yes. So now we're gonna burn down the temple and the houses and the big houses. The big houses. Yeah. The the nice houses. The nice, They'll burn down the nice houses. They'll leave the dirty, crappy trailers. <laughs> right. The trailer park's still there in Jerusalem. The trailer park was still there in Jerusalem. So but, it's a good thing then. Yeah. We weren't in the big house. But that, you know, it was like anybody with money, anybody with power, their yeah. houses were burned down. Anything of value was taken. And they talked about these massive pillars, 18 cubits. So a cubit is what, a foot and a half? Yeah. So that's 18 plus nine, yeah. 27 feet. 27 feet of 27 feet tall of a pillar. So if you're going to be making a pillar 27 feet tall, it's got to be about this big around. Yeah. And that's just an insane amount of bronze. Yeah. And so they carried that off. And they had they actually had to break it up into pieces in order to carry it off. Yeah. And the bath, which was described earlier when Solomon made it, yeah. could, which what was it, six feet across? Yeah, it's huge. It was absolutely massive. Yeah. So all these things are happening and they're carried in exile in verse twelve, but well it's eleven and twelve, and then twelve it says the captain of the guard uh, that never Zaradon. Uh, left some of the poorest people to kind yes. of tend the land a little bit. So a little bit of farming now is in Jerusalem. That's about that's about all. Uh, so it describes all these things been broken up up through verse seventeen, um, and then then there is this other slaughter that takes place. Um, yeah, where verse twenty one. He brings uh, verse 18, 19, and from the city he took the officer who had been in command of the men of war and five men of the king's council who were found in the city and the secretary of the commander of the army who mustered the people of the land and 60 men of the people of the land who were found in the city. So these were like kind of leaders of the opposition yep. when the Babylonians were laying siege to Jerusalem. So he gathers up all those that were left, brings them to Ribla, yep. so that he can just be executed right before uh, the the king of Babylon. Yep. Uh, so that's that's not so. They're pretty much. It looks completely hopeless at this point. Yes. If it, you were a Jewish person, you're like, this is the end. Uh, it, it, the northern kingdom was already wiped out by the Assyrians. Southern kingdom now Judah wiped out by the Babylonians. It looks like there's no hope whatsoever. But this is when the prophet Ezekiel uh, is, the Lord says, do you see these bones? Yes. Right? Prophesy to the bones. Yeah. The dry bones. The dry bones come together and then sinew comes on and flesh comes on. So the Lord is able to speak life into where there is nothing but the appearance of death. It's just gone. It's done. There's no hope. And there's a little smidgen after you went through all these uh, names that no one can pronounce um, from 22 on. Uh, well, you see all this kind of stuff going on in which they struck down the governor that was put in place, Gedaliah, uh, in verse 25. Yep. They, 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 they did that. Um, and then the people who did that, they fled to Egypt. <laughs> so, yeah. They're trying to get away as far away from Babylon as possible. <clears throat> and then, um, so Zedekiah had his eyes put out, but Jehoiachin was taken into captivity earlier. Right. Uh, in like round one of this, before Jerusalem was completely wiped out. And this is the only little smidgen of hope that you kind of see in this whole chapter, that Jehoiachin, a descendant of David is released from prison yes and he's a and he's given a seat at the king's table that that's the under uh, evil Merodach. <laughs> evil merit <laughs> he's the one of that's it that's a name yeah um <laughs> he's the one that frees him <laughs> and, he's the one who frees him and he's let let to sit at the king's table so that's the smidgen that is like this little tiny smidgen of hope that God hasn't forgotten them and that they're going to be provided for. 
and you see that they are. I mean, in the in the time of captivity, they are provided for, and there's eventually restoration. But boy, what yeah. a what an end to the to everything, and all because uh, the sins of Manasseh had risen to such a level that it's like, I'm done. Yep. Lord God said, I'm done with you. It's too much in there. Almost. <laughs> You know, in a way, it's kind of like the flood, where it, not quite to the same extent, but this is the sort of the purging, the clearing out, where, you know, you had the flood, where all of the land, everything was just destroyed and wiped clean. And here, essentially, you have Jerusalem being destroyed and wiped clean, where it's like, okay, Everything is being moved out of it. Um, yeah. The buildings were burned down. The walls were torn down. The people were carried off into captivity. And it was left as a clean slate. It was left to rest until yeah. a return from the captivity. And then they start rebuilding. And then they start rebuilding. Rebuilding the temple, rebuilding Jerusalem. Uh, all those things uh, start to take place. And then even that was desecrated then again because under the Greeks, uh, when Alexander the Great died, his four sons divided up the kingdom. It's like four, four generals. Four generals, yeah, yeah, four generals, not his sons yet. Four generals divided up uh, the, the the kingdom, and the one that was ruling in uh, Jerusalem uh, had them set up a statue. Uh, was it of him? I'm going to get this kind of wrong, but yeah. it's either of himself or Zeus or something like that. And they were supposed to bow down to the statue in, in there. And that was the uh, intertestamental period of the Maccabees yes. revolt uh, against there. So even after the temples were rebuilt, it was desecrated again. And then I think another rebuilding, kind of a refurbishing under Herod. And that's the time of Jesus. Then. Right. That was the time of Jesus. Yeah. So uh, a lot of things where it looks like this is the end, but it's not the end. It might be in our lives sometimes it looks like this is the end. There's no hope. But God is, is in control, and sometimes his provision is, you know, I don't know if you ever have it in your, own, your life. It's like God doesn't give us like, uh, you know, six months from now I'm going to do this for you or whatever it is. No. It's like it's at the precise moment. But meanwhile, I've kind of lost a lot of sleep. <laughs> yeah. At the precise moment, the that the need, you know, is the need is met. The need is met. Uh, and then, and and so I think he's trying to teach us to trust in him. To uh, he he cares for us. He will provide for us at the right moment, which might not be in our timing, but no. it's in his timing that he provides for us. So uh, keep that in mind. Anything else that we, as we wrap up? We're not going to be getting together until after Labor Day now. Yep. And again, if you have um, a book of the Bible you'd like to do from the Old Testament, let me know. Yeah. If it's something we haven't done before. Anything else? I don't have anything else. All right, let's, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this time together. I want to thank you for each and every person who has watched these videos. And I pray for your hand of blessing to be upon them, that they would grow in their wisdom and understanding of who you are and to trust in you and follow you all the days of their life. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Take care. See you in September.